everybody, it's Miss Sue. Welcome back to Learning with Friends. Today is going to be our Valentine Learning with Friends. Valentine is a day that we show people that we love how much we care about them and some of the ways we do that is we wear hearts. So I wore a shirt with little hearts on it and red pants today and I have heart earrings. Sometimes you get cards from people with Valentines on them. I like the cards that have the candy, don't you? But that's what we're going to do today is talk about Valentines and hearts and all of that fun stuff. I'm so glad that you're here. Hello, Aria. Hello, Leona. Hello, Isaac. I'm glad that you are here. So today our letter is the letter S. S makes us sound. And I like the letter S because my name starts with the letter S, Sue. I have a special paper on here today for my friends that will be doing the live Zoom with me. This is a paper that says, Things I Love. And there are four boxes here. You can download this paper on our website at www.careforthekids.org under our Learning with Friends in the Learning Center. And you can draw four things, or you can ask mom or dad to help you write four things, or you can cut out some pictures of things that you love and glue them on here. But you can find four things that you love. I think I might put my daughter's picture here and my husband's picture, because I love my family. And maybe I'll put my dog's pictures, because I like my dogs a lot too. And you know what else I love? I love ice cream. So I might put a picture of ice cream on my paper. But that's on here today. So the letter S, which makes us sound, what else makes us sound? How about a snake? S the snake helps us remember the sound and the shape of the letter S. Because look at the letter S, it's kind of curvy like a snake, isn't it? This has a picture of a sand dollar, a snail, a snake, a spider, and a starfish. All of those things start with the letter S. We also have a paper on our website where you can practice making those, making those curvy lines for the letter S. You can make a big S and a little S if you practice with this paper. And then there's another paper that even has more pictures of things that start with the letter S. There's our snake right there. Socks, Santa, the sun, Snowman, strawberries, yum. A sofa, I'm sitting on a pink sofa, aren't I? A squirrel, and look at all these numbers that start with the letter S. Seven, 17, and 70. All of those letters, numbers start with the letter S. So let's see what else I brought with the letter S today. I know some of my friends really, really like Spider-Man. Spider-Man starts with the letter S, doesn't it? And Spider-Man can do something that starts with the letter S. He uses his spider web and he swings, doesn't he? So S is Spider-Man and swings. And I brought this guy here today. He is a seahorse. Seahorse starts with the letter S. Can you think of some other things at the beach that start with the letter S? How about seashells? Seashells start with the letter S too. And sand. So if you go to the beach, you might see the sea, the ocean, seashells, sand, seagulls, lots of things at the beach start with the letter S, don't they? And if you go to the beach, you're gonna wanna bring some snacks, aren't you? Because playing in the water and the sand can make you hungry. Snacks start with the letter S. How about some things we use here at the clinic that start with the letter S? Stethoscope and syringe. Those both start with the letter S, don't they? And then I had one more thing. I have a skeleton hand. I don't know what happened to the rest of the skeleton, but I have his hand here. And that starts with the letter S. I bet if you look around your house, you'll see lots of things. If you live in a, a place that has stairs, stairs start with the letter S, don't they? And sometimes you might take a shower. Shower has an SH, so it makes a SH sound instead of a SS sound. But shower also starts with the letter S. 
So today we're going to talk about hearts because it's Valentine's Day. We did the heart shape before and I have a paper that has lots of shapes on it. And you have to find all the heart shapes and color them in. Sometimes an easy way to make a heart is to fold your letter, your paper in half and you make kind of a half circle and make it go down to a point. And when you cut that out, you'll have a heart. So if you're learning how to use scissors, maybe mom or dad can help you draw that on a piece of paper that's folded so that you can cut on that line they draw. And then we haven't done any numbers in a while, so I have a, a paper with some hearts, and you have to count the hearts and figure out how many hearts are in each row. So like this row has just one heart. Down here there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's lots of hearts on this paper to, to count, and then you can color them. Have you ever had some of those little heart-shaped candies that are different colors? Maybe you could color your hearts those different colors of the candies. That might be fun. And since we're doing some numbers with those hearts, here's another paper with some things for Valentine's Day. Some cupcakes with hearts, some heart lollipops, some cupcakes with sprinkles, and some candies, because sweets are things that we get for Valentine's, aren't they? And sweet starts with the letter S. So on this paper, it has a picture with three cupcakes. It has the number two, the number five, and the number three. And you have to color the box with the right number. So those are lots of things that you can practice when you're at home. And then we talked about making a, a heart shape. Here's some heart shapes you can trace to help you learn how to make that shape. Or if you're learning how to use scissors, um, maybe you can try and cut out some of the big hearts. The little hearts might be hard to use scissors on, but lots and lots of hearts today for Valentine's Day, huh? So we're going to talk more about the heart, the heart inside of our body. Do you know the heart inside our body doesn't look like a Valentine heart? Let me show you what it looks like. The heart in our body is actually a muscle, and it is a very important muscle because it has the most important job of all in our body. See, this is our heart. It doesn't really look like the heart shape on a valentine, does it? But there's all sorts of tubes going in and out of the heart. And I have my friend Buddy here to show us. Those are veins. So here's Buddy, and here's his heart right here, and you see all these big veins. Remember we've talked about veins before. You can see the veins in my hand and they go all the way up my arm into my chest and then they get really big. They're as big as my pinky finger when they're in my chest. And that's how our blood travels through our body. We've talked lots and lots about red blood cells carrying oxygen to our brains so we can be awake and learn things and to our muscles so that we can move and have energy. Our heart is what makes our blood move in our body to deliver that oxygen. It's a muscle that squeezes just like that and pumps the blood. Sometimes we've played with those pretend blood pressure cuffs and we squeeze that little bulb and it makes the air go in the tube. Well, just like that little bulb makes the air go in the tube, our heart makes our blood move through the tubes in our body, the veins. So this is what the heart looks like, and your heart is about as big as your fist. So if you make a fist and put that right up next to your chest, that's about how big your heart is. We've talked about feeling our heart beating, ba bum ba bum Sometimes if we put our hand on our neck, we can feel our pulse, ba bum ba bum That's that blood moving through our veins. Our blood is being pumped by our heart, and that's the, what we feel. So it's pretty interesting and very important if our blood is not moving through our body, we can't be alive. So we're going to come back in just a few minutes and take a little break, okay?
Welcome back, everybody. As a special treat for Valentine's Day, we're going to read a story about one of my favorite characters, Skippy John Jones. Skippy John's name starts with the letter S, doesn't it? I might have read you this book before because Skippy John Jones is a Siamese cat. Siamese starts with the letter S also. The problem is that Skippy John Jones doesn't think he's a cat. He thinks he's a chihuahua, which is a dog. It's pretty silly. Every morning, Skippy John Jones woke up with the birds. Can you see those two little cat ears up in that bird nest? It's a little strange, don't you think? And this did not please his mama at all. Get yourself down here right now, Mr. Kitten Britches, ordered Mama Junebug Jones. No self-respecting cat ever slept with a flock of birds, she scolded, or ate worms or flew, or did his laundry in Mrs. Doohickey's bird bath. She is not happy with him, is she? The lecture went on and on as usual. You've got to do some serious thinking before you leave this room, Mr. Fuzzy Pants, said his mother, about just what it means to be a cat, not a bird, not a mouse or a grouse, not a moose or a goose, not a rat or a bat. You need to think just what it means to be a Siamese cat. And stay out of your closet, she added, closing the bedroom door. Look at, he is sitting in his little cat bed pouting, isn't he? I think he's on a timeout. But once he was alone, Skippy John Jones began to bounce and bounce and bounce on his big boy bed. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones and I bounce on my bed and once or six times I land on my head. On his way down to earth from a gigantic big bounce, Skippy John Jones shot past his bedroom mirror. Oh, holy guacamole, exclaimed Skippy John Jones. What was that? And so he went up again and again it appeared. Then using his very best Spanish accent, he said, my ears are too big for my head. My head is too big for my body. I am not a Siamese cat. I am a Chihuahua. Back on land, Skippy John Jones climbed into his toy box and rifled through some of his old junk. After he put on his mask and sword and climbed onto his mouse, Skippy John Jones began to sing in a mooey, mooey, soft voice. My name is Skippito Fresquito. I fear not a single bandito. My manners are mellow, they're sweet like the jello. I get the chum that is instantito. Back in the kitchen, Jujubee, Jezebel, and Jilly Boo Jones were helping Mama Junebug Jones make lunch. Can Skippy John come out of his room now? asked Jujubee. No, answered Mama Junebug Jones. Mr. Fluffernutter is still thinking. In fact, Skippy John wasn't thinking about being a Siamese cat at all. With a walk into his closet, his thoughts took him down a lonesome desert road far, far away in old Mexico. Not long into his journey, a mysterious band of chihuahuas appeared out of the dust. Hi, caramba, who goes there? asked Skippy John Jones. We go by the name of Los Chimichangos, growled Don Diego, the biggest of the small ones. Who are you? I am El Scapito Fresquito, the great sword fighter, said Skippy John Jones. Then the smallest of the small ones spoke up. Why the masquito, Dito? asked Paquito Tito. I go incognito said Scapito. Do you like rice and beans? asked Pintolito. <gasps> See, I love mice and beans, said Scapito. He might be the dog of our dreams, whispered Rosalita. Perhaps, said Tia Mia, if he knows the secret password. Leaning toward Don Diego, El Scapito half sneezed, half spoke the secret password into the Chihuahua's very large ear. Uh Bless you, said Don Diego. Gracias, said Scapito. Then it is true, declared Don Diego. Yippee, 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 it's the end of Alfredo Buzito. Scapito is here, we have nothing to fear, adios to the babapolito. Then all of the chimichangos went crazy loco. First they had a fiesta, that's a party. And then they took a siesta, that's a nap. 
But poor Scapito had no time for a plan because in the blink of an eye, a gigantic shadow darkened the landscape. The chimichangos scattered in all directions. Vamos, Scapito, or it is you, the bandito, will ito, they cried. Scapito stood his ground, but his legs shimmied and shook like the jello, and his teeth chattered like castanets. Then in a muy muy soft voice, he said, my name is Scapito Rosquito. I fear not a single bandito. But Alfredo Bazito flew straight for Scapito until the bean-eating bandito hovered only inches away from the great sword fighter's face. Holy frijoles, cried Scapito as he thrust his sword into the air. Pop! went the bandito, landing on Scapito's sword, and quicker than one could say, Chihuahua's cheese and crackers. Every kind of bean came spilling out of Alfredo Bazito, the Bumbolito Bandito. Then all the doggies burst into song. Yippee, 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 the Our hero is El Scapito. He's the dog of our dreams. He delivered the beans, and now we can make our burritos. Back at home, there was such a ruckus coming from Skippy John's room that Mama Junebug Jones and the girls just had to find out what was going on. They raced down the hall to the kitty boy's room. Banguito, crashito, papito, Skippito, just in time to see Skippy John's closet exploding. Then out flew Candy, beanbag doggies, and the kitty boy with his birthday pinata on his head. Skippy John Jones, everyone cried. Hola, muchachitas, he said in a muy, muy soft voice. Mama Junebug Jones lifted up Skippy John and covered his head with furry, furry kisses. What am I going to do with you, Mr. Coco Pugs, she scolded. That night, when he was supposed to be going to sleep, Skippy John began to bounce and bounce on his big boy bed. Oh, I'm Skippy John Jones with a mind of my own and I'll bounce on my bed for hours. I know I'm a cat, but forget about that. Say goodnight, Skippy John Jones, called his mama. Buenas noches, amigos, said Skippy John Jones. That is one silly cat, isn't it? There were a lot of S words in the story today. Did you notice that? Like sword and siesta. And did you notice his mama made some rhymes? Cat. She said, you're a cat, not a bird or a mouse or a grouse, not a moose or a goose or a bat or a rat. Can you think of words that rhyme? I like to rhyme words. So we're going to do a song we've done before, but it has lots of rhymes in it. So it's one of my favorites. And that's the um, Down by the Bay song. Okay, we'll do some different animals than we did last time though. Down by the bay, where the watermelon grow, back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother would say, did you ever see a cat wearing a hat down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelon grow? Back to my home, I dare not go. For if I do, my mother would say, did you ever see a dog chasing a frog down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelon grow? Back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say. Did you ever see a mouse building a house down by the bay, down by the bay, where the watermelon grow? Back to my home, I dare not go, for if I do, my mother would say. Did you ever see a snake baking a cake down by the bay? So we put some words into that song today that we were talking about. We did snake and Skippy John, of course, is a cat who thinks he's a dog. It was a great day today. I hope everyone has a happy Valentine's Day. I love you all and I thank you for being here. Goodbye, Jada. Goodbye, Cash. Goodbye, Dallas. I'm glad that you were here. Goodbye, Lorenzo. Goodbye, Jordan. Goodbye, Picara. I'm glad that you're my friends.